Hi, thanks for coming. I'm Travis Coons. I'm a second generation farrier from Romaline, California. And today I want to talk a little bit about safety. Um, our bodies are our number one tools. Without, without a good, healthy body, we can't efficiently go make money. I've had the misfortune of being hit with shrapnel probably 16 different times. The problem is, is we, we need a, a good, dependable, reliable tool that's going to last. Our hammers are hard, and our fullers are hard, and our punches are hard. If they weren't, they wouldn't hold up long. But the problem is, every now and then, one of them's going to lose the battle. And when that happens, we're going to have shrapnel. Before I ever start to make a shoe, or do a demonstration, or anything like that, I always inspect my tools. I inspect the cutting edges to make sure that they're in good working order and they're going to do the job I need them to do. But more importantly, I check the striking surfaces. I look for cracks and chips, mushroomed edges that might turn into shrapnel. I discovered this fuller walking around this morning. It's got a few chips missing right on the edge. And this isn't this isn't a def is not a defect from the tool maker. This is just bad hammer control. You're not supposed to hit the edge of the tool at all. These tools are designed to be hit in the center of the striking surface. Whenever you get out towards the edge, chances are you're going to have a chip. And that chip is going to shoot off and become a projectile. So when I notice things like this, I'll go address them on the grinder and we'll go over that in a minute. This morning I was going to make some draft shoes, so I got my draft pritchel out. And I inspected it, and the edges looked really good and clean, but it, when I took a closer look, I discovered that there's about a half inch deep hairline crack running directly through the center of the striking surface. I'll highlight it with a silver marker so that you could see it. And this again, this is not a tool maker defect. Tool steels, there's different grades of tool steels, there's different alloys, but most of them will work harden over time. So every time we hit this, it's compacting molecules, it's, it's causing the steel to work harden. So as it work hardens, it eventually gets brittle. It gets so hard that it's brittle. And this crack is pretty close to the center of the steel or the center of the section of this tool. So we basically, what's going to happen is if I didn't notice this, I'm eventually going to go to Pritchell a nail hole and when I hit it, it's going to shear off about a, a half inch long by three quarter inch wide chunk of steel that's probably going to go in and cut my hand since this is a handheld tool. It could cut a tendon, it could cut an artery, it could be a, a very potentially bad situation. So there's no grinding this back. I've got to chop this off, re-round up the surface, and probably what I'll do is I'll heat this up just to the point where it starts to show color, and then I'll let it air cool, and that will anneal this t the striking surface to where it won't be so brittle that it'll crack. <coughs> I'll highlight these chips on the fuller. That's not doing much because it's silver, just like the pin. But we've basically got three chips on this. One on the back side, and then two on this side. When you think about it, when you're working on the anvil, hitting the striking surface, most of us have a tendency to have a pulling hammer blow. So if I'm fullering with my pulling hammer blow, and I miss and I hit that edge, I'm going to pull that shrapnel right in and around the area of my midsection and my crotch. Very dangerous area to get hit with shrapnel. Here's another punch I discovered walking around inspecting tools this morning. This one's missing a very large chunk out of the side. I would say this chunk is three eighths of an inch long and about a quarter of an inch deep. And you could tell by looking at these edges that 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 chip was razor sharp on at least two of its surfaces. And once again, this was not a tool maker defect. This was not a bad piece of steel. The owner of this tool hit the edge. 
you've got to try and develop hammer control to where you hit the center of the tool. Running my finger across here, I see that there's grease on this striking surface. This is another very potentially dangerous situation. If there's grease or buffing compound or anything like that on that striking surface, it's going to cause your hammer to glance off. Even if you hit in the center, whatever inertia there is on the hammer, if it's a pulling or a sweeping or a pushing blow, it's going to glance off because the hammer cannot get traction on greasy steel. It's lubricated. All right, let's. Be caused by too much dipping in the... Yeah, I see it a lot. People, when they go to quench the tip of their tool, which is perfectly fine, you need to quench that. Not in water, but in the grease or a soap or a wax. You only need to just quench the cutting edge. You don't need to quench up here by the handle. So, so people bear down and they push that clear up to the handle and it's hot so the grease is splattering and boiling and it ends up getting all over your striking surface. I don't, when I grind this, you'll see I'm gonna use a rough grip belt to remove some stock and get everything safed back up. I'm not, I don't want any sharp corners on this striking surface. I want it to go, I want it to have a, just a nice smooth radius where you can't feel an edge anywhere. Just nothing but safe, rounded off edges. Like I said, I'm gonna use a rough grip belt and I'm gonna leave it rough. I'm not gonna go polish it on a buffing wheel or a deburring wheel. This is a striking surface. If it has a little bit of a rough texture to it, a matte finish, it's gonna have a little better traction when you hit it with your hammer. All right, let's go to the grinder. All right, I'm gonna address the cracked area first. I got my safety glasses on. I don't wanna, I don't wanna injure my eye trying to fix my tool to prevent injuring my eye with my tool. I'm just gonna go right after it and try and grind it so you can't even see that tip anymore. Whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other to keep the striking surface symmetrical. So I've moved my edges down approximately three-eighths of an inch from the top of the striking surface. Need to do a little more on that side to get that to match. Now I'm going to reduce the height of the striking surface and blend in the top to where there's no edge, just a nice radius. I've done that front to back. Now I've got a nice dome. Now I'm going to go side to side and create a dome that way. No edge anywhere on that striking surface, but for me, it's just a little bit too round, so I'm going to reduce the radius and flatten it somewhat.
run off my corner so that they flow up into the radius. Now I have what I consider a very safe, usable target. I can, the center of the tool is the highest part, so I'm more apt to hit the center of my target, of my striking surface. All of my corners are gone. There's no sharp edge anywhere to break off. Now we'll address the fuller. The three chunks missing out of the fuller. We're going to get rid of those right off the bat. ground off the edges until I can't see the chips anymore, but what I've done to one side, I've got to do to the other. I've got to keep the target, the center of the striking surface, and the center of the tool. Now I have the tool, I have a nice dome to the striking surface, I've moved the edges, the sharp edges further down away from my target area, but once again I have a little more dome than what I prefer to have, so I'm going to flatten this dome and just blend everything in nice and smooth. Now I have what I would consider a, a very safe striking surface. Once again, there's no sharp corner that I can feel anywhere. Everything's a nice soft edge, domed up, no corners. Corners are normally the first thing to break off if you hit them. For our pritchel, for the striking surface of our pritchel, it comes into the, into the tool about a half inch deep. That would take a long time to grind that back and it would get very, very hot. So instead, I'm just gonna chop that half inch off with the chop saw and then I'll dome my striking surface with the grinder.
chop saw, a big mistake that I see is as soon as the chop saw cuts through the stock, people flop it open and start taking it out. That wheel is still spinning fast enough that it could cut your finger off. Notice I held it down until the wheel stopped spinning. Just took a second, but it was quite a bit safer situation. So as you can see now, I have a very square edge with sharp corners. If I were to just go start using this tool, I would probably immediately have chips come out of it. Sharp corners are weak, so we've got to get rid of those. So I'm going to chamfer each edge. By chamfering the edges, that's moved the sharp corners down approximately an eighth of an inch from my target area or my striking surface. less likely to be hit with the edge of the hammer. But now, I'll work on my radius. Doming off the striking surface. Now I have a nice dome from side to side. Actually, that's front to back. And now I'm gonna dome it side to side. What I'm doing here is I'm easing the transition in to where there's never, now there's no sharp edge anywhere. I'm going from flat around the radius. Flat around to the top radius of the striking surface. And what that does is it removes this sharp edge. And now I'm going to do the same thing to each corner. I always visually inspect my tools as well as, as feel them. Make sure everything feels nice and smooth. Sometimes you can feel things that you can't quite see. Now I consider that a good safe pritchel. By doing that my pritchel should last longer. I won't knock chips out of it. And I've improved my situation by making it a safer work environment and I've made it safer for everybody that's going to be watching.